Hey, <laughs> guess what? <laughs> Grandma got a GoPro. Now we are dangerous. <laughs> Hi, welcome back. Now we're going to do this in several batches, but I want to go ahead and show you real quick. The pickles are done. Okay, it's been, I want to say, nine days. I just left them on a little bit longer than normal. I'm going to show you. You've got your weight that you want to remove. And here's the pickle. As you can see, it's been fully fermented, very juicy. Let me go ahead and actually cut this. It's still crisp. It's hold its shape very well. See that? It's not soggy. Dill pickle. Definitely gonna finish that. Now we're gonna go ahead and take these fermenting loads off, put them in the refrigerator. Will last forever in the refrigerator. Now the crop is turning white. It's not green anymore. That's what you want to see. I, I still have a little bit of seepage up atop, but for the most part, it's done bubbling. This is where it takes time. We have another about another three weeks left for this to actually finish fermenting, okay? Okay, so this episode is going to be all about the soy. Okay, you have uh, soy sauce, which is a year-long ferment. Uh, I typically make more of a miso type of uh, ferment because of the fact that I cannot have wheat. Typical soy sauce is brewed with wheat. Um, I cannot have that, so I basically double the, the soy in the recipe along with what's called koji. Koji is a inoculated uh, rice product that you can get off of uh, the internet. Um, most Asian places do not have it. At least not the ones that I can find. If you can find one in your area that actually has koji, go for it because it is wonderful. Uh, you can do a whole bunch of different types of uh, fermentations, inoculations with koji, K-O-J-I. You want to take a, a do a, a search for that. Now, uh, the traditional way of making soy sauce is you would soak your beans overnight and then cook in a pot for six hours. I'm not going to do that. We're going to go ahead and uh, this is going to take several days. So it's Tuesday after work and we're going to go ahead and can enough soybeans to be able to make a gallon of the miso so we can uh, make the soy sauce. So one, two, three. I'm also going to go ahead and can some chicken with this because they take the same amount of time to pressure cook. Now this is with you, any beans. You can do this with any beans. First, we're doing this with soy. Let's see. For one quart of soybeans, you want one cup of dry beans. Or approximately. You know what? I'm going to get the funnel. We're 
We're just going to do this entire jar. And then we're going to go ahead and fill these with water and then seal them up. Now do not add salt to these, just soybeans and water. If you smell these, they may have a little bit of smell from the last time. If it had anything in it, you really don't run anything too strong like pickles. Bertha out and we're gonna go ahead and do some quartz. Now here we go with the chicken. The reason why I'm doing chicken is because they've been in my freezer too long and they neither need to be eaten or becomes dog food. Now, I do have friends who have dogs. Does not mean that anything still goes to waste in my home. I just make the dog food for them. stuff as many as we can in one of these because it, they will shrink. And I'll go ahead and use the meat because these are all drumsticks. I'll go ahead and use the meat for things like chicken salad. Nothing too 
huge or special. Because honestly, drumsticks for me is too much work for a little meat. Kind of like the wing. For me, it's not worth it. But if you get a large batch like this, you can go ahead and uh, make um, chicken soup with it because you're going to debone it anyway. And that's basically what I'm doing is I'm making the stock along with the bones and everything else that, that's already in here. Now I'm going to raw pack these. And for these, I really don't care what the lid smells like. Let me actually add some flavor to it. I mean, you're always, you know, you're doing a batch anyway. You might as well fill up the pot with whatever you got. Yeah, full pot now. Go ahead and put it on half of here. Turn it on and then put water in this. You want about three inches from the bottom. To be able to get enough pressure and for the water to last long enough because these are going to need to stay into the pot until uh, they're 90 minutes for an hour and a half the, the little thing needs to jiggle. So let's go ahead and, and get this started and we'll be right back. Okay now that it is a few days later and everything's nice and canned and cold we're gonna go ahead and process the beans. I'm gonna put, put them in my blender um, because the last time I did it was with, with a potato masher and it took a couple hours to get everything to the right consistency. This is the koji that I have talked to you about. It comes in Asian writing. I don't know what it is. This is one kilogram. Uh, they are, it's pretty expensive. It's like $20 or so for a bag. Uh, but uh, this will give me enough soy sauce for about two years, about two years, depending on how much I actually use. Um, now, it's saying that for every thousand milligram or thousand kilogram or thousand grams of soy. Uh, beans for one kilogram. Now I'm going to alter this a little bit because I'm doing a gluten-free um, recipe. I'm actually doubling the soybeans that I'm putting in here and um, om omitting the wheat berries that usually is brewed with the soybeans. So I'm just going to go ahead and use one kilogram and we're going to use a, a little bit more time for the um, the koji to inoculate the soy bean, uh, bean paste. You're also want to go ahead and clean and wash and sterilize your jar. I am using a one gallon jar. You can use multiple little ones if you wish. Um, if you don't have one of these, like you know, a half a gallon, a couple quarts. But I am making a lot, and this is going to uh, last quite a number of years for me. Okay, 
Okay, first things first, we want to drain most of the liquid out, not all of it. Because we still need the liquid to help process the beans. And the liquid is actually what's going to be turning into the soy sauce. So let me go ahead and get a strainer. Lose some beans. There we go. Put that in here. Where'd I put the lid? I hid the lid on me. Okay, so now what we have right now is a lumpy milkshake type thing. You kind of want to get it into a milkshake type thing. So we're going to keep on um, grinding this down until we have a nice thick paste. And that's what we want. Just soybeans and water. Now after you um, get everything done, Go ahead and put it in a very large bowl. Um, my Asian uh, store actually uh, sells bowls not only this big, but even bigger. I've got a bigger one that we're going to work on kimchi with. But um, these are great for batches like this. So let's go ahead and continue on. Because we are going to do a gallon, so this is going to take all four quarts that we actually canned. Now I did lose one jar of soybeans to the great god ball. The bottom broke out and soybeans everywhere. All nice and cooked, but I'm not gonna set, you know, risk using those soybeans, even though it was a clean break. You never know if there's any microglass in there. Uh, but I do have some uh, uh, two jar, uh, quart jars that I canned earlier to process 
I was going to make tofu and then I realized that I can't make tofu with cooked soybeans. You actually have to uh, do this process with raw soybeans soaked overnight in order to make tofu or soy milk. So I just saved it for soy sauce later. So we're going to process all of them. And if I need to add another jar to this, I will. As in brewing. The reason why you want to keep the water in here is because the koji is a rice product. It's kind of like instant rice. It's already been uh, rehydrated, processed, and then inoculated with a spore or a bacteria that is actually grown over the rice. Uh, so what we're going to do is we're going to leave the moisture in that are in, that's in the jars in the, with the beans. Not only will the bean it you help with the bean, hydration of the beans, but it'll also help with hydration of the um, of the bacteria that you need. That and the rice also soaks everything up. Now, like I said, we're doing this gluten-free. You would use half of these beans if you were uh, adding anything else. Now, I've heard people using cashews instead of wheat. I've never personally tr uh, actually um, tried it. So I don't know what the flavor profile is to be able to report anything. It's a neat yeah, idea, yeah, though. I don't know if cashews would actually hurt or hinder me because I my blood sugar reacts to peanuts and walnuts. It's really weird because you everybody every diabetic is like take a spoonful of, of, of peanuts you know of, of, or a spoonful of peanut butter before you go to bed to help with your blood sugar. I can't do that. I actually have the opposite reaction and I don't know why. If anybody knows why please comment and let me know. I miss my peanut butter. So that's all five of them. Yeah, so those, it looks a little bit like soup. And it's supposed to. Traditionally, you kind of chop them up. Nah. This just makes it a little bit less difficult. Now, 
Now for people who can't take soy products, uh, there's something called um, coconut aminos that tastes just like soy sauce, but it's made with coconut. And, and there are those special people who actually can't handle either. I feel for you. I really do. Because the taste of soy sauce or the uh, coconut aminos is a flavor that is very unique especially if you do it homemade. I never made coconut aminos before. And that is something that doesn't really interest me because I can do this. But if I ever have a problem with soy in the future, which I have a tendency to um, uh, collect out food allergies like baseball cards, um, then that may be an option for me later on. Now to this, we are going to add two cups of salt. Yes, I said cups. That's a lot of salt. You need that salt in here um, to be able to uh, get rid of the bad bacteria and keep the good bacteria that you want. That and you're making a condiment, so whenever you actually use the soy sauce, you're only using maybe a tablespoon max. You know, you sprinkle a couple of drops on your rice or whatnot. So it's basically like adding salt with flavor to your food. Oh, it looks like grandma. Good thing I went to the store right before this. Got another one. I had a feeling this would happen. And I go about two to three of these a, uh, a year. These are $5.99 each. So about $20 worth of, of salt, of $20, will last me a year to a year and a half, depending on how much I, of this I do. We do a lot of pickles. Because that's the only way that, that, that Grandpa Rubble will actually eat pickles. He doesn't like vinegar. Even though I try to sneak it in the food sometimes. And he knows it. You want to make sure that's all nice and mixed up. Then you're going to add the koji. The whole bag. You didn't see that. Now you want to make sure that this is thoroughly mixed. If you need to, you can use your hands. There we go. There. 
And here we have our very, very young soy sauce ferment. It's going to take about um, a year for this, so make sure you have a nice, dark cupboard, say the one above your refrigerator or in a corner somewhere that won't be disturbed. Um, you're going to want to check on this about every three months or so. Make sure everything is, is okay. Now there's a special way to actually store this. I'm going to go ahead and go over that with you. While it's fermenting, you want to first get it in the jar. Hold on. Get it in the jar. I am definitely going to need more jars. Now, headspace for this is not going to be a thing. In fact, the more towards the top it is, the better, um, because you don't have so much surface space uh, exposed to air. I'm going to try to make sure that all bubbles are out. You can see a little bit. That's all right. Those will come to the top eventually. This is going to get loud. Kind of like cake batter. There we go. Now, another reason for salt, we're going to seal this up with salt. That's actually recommended with cellophane, uh, plastic uh, cellophane. Now, you don't do it over the top like this, okay? What you want to do, there we go, let's get your salt shaker out, very, very gently get the edges and the top to form a crust and you want to make a, a nice thick crust over this. Eventually the salt will meld in with the rest of it. But this is uber important because you don't want the soy sauce or the, uh, the, the I want to say mush, soy sauce mush into, you don't want to expose to oil, to air. So you get as much as the around the corners as possible. 
And then what you want to do is you want to put this on top of the salt as best as you can to form a seal. I'm using a Ziploc bag because I'm out of cellophane. Cellophane is preferred. Okay, as best as you can. Like I said, every three months, check this seal. Okay, if you have anything green, then you need to scoop the green off quickly. And then resalt. Okay, and instead of putting a cheesecloth around this with the with the um, with the rubber band like you do with the yogurt, we're gonna go ahead and lightly put this lid on. We're not gonna tighten it down. We just want enough to be able to for the uh, insects to not get in. We do want it to off gas. how loose that is. We don't want it to off gas, but we don't want any insects to get into it. And that is basically soy sauce. I'm going to finish this up and put everything in my cupboard. Now, this is two year soy sauce. I, it is unpressed. Um, it is very dark. It's almost black. And there's still liquid in the bottom here. This is something that does not need refri refrigeration. Uh, it, it, this has been sitting on the top of my refrigerator for two years, waiting for me to use it. Now, once you press the soy sauce out of this, and it is a press, it's kind of like press, uh, cheese, uh, getting the way out of cheese, you know, pressing it down. Um, you can use, bottle up the liquid, and then the solids, you can either use in animal feed if you have animals, or you can use it as a marinade for uh, meat and vegetables because you can inoculate it still has that koji in there uh, you can actually use it to inoculate your 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 meats and makes it a wonderful marinade and this is all you need you don't need extra salt you don't need onions anything else like that to marinate it with all you need is this this will last forever